Hey guys! Welcome, welcome, welcome today. I am so excited to be with you. It is an honor and it is a privilege truly um, to minister to you and be with you this morning. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're doing and I thank you for what you're about to do, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, permeate the atmosphere with your grace and your love and your just understanding. Open up the eyes of our hearts and our minds and our spirits today, Lord God, to receive what you have spoke, what you're going to speak. And Lord Jesus, help us to not only receive it, to digest it, but to believe it as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, in the, amen. Hey guys, today's sermon is called The Transparency Chain. This sermon came about uh, when I was sending a voice note to a friend, and I was talking about openness, uh, transparency, and healing and I was talking about um, uh, we were talking about how people um, how people hold uh, me and this person were talking about uh, conversation and how the the nature of conversation has changed to comments like we don't we don't have real conversation and she was saying sometimes it's best to keep things light I'm like I said yes that's true sometimes we we need to laugh we need to have fun we need to do all that stuff and things that need to be heavy all the time uh, I said the problem comes however when you're going through something heavy and you feel that there is no one to tell the heaviness to. You don't you don't talk to anyone about it. You don't even talk to the Lord about it. Like cause there are certain th things that go down in your life that you don't even you don't have words for. There are you can't even under it. Sometimes you don't even know what's wrong. And I was talking to her about this and um, and I, I said to her yesterday um, in the voice note, I said uh, sometimes uh, transparency is needed. And I said to her um, what I think is needed in the church is a culture of openness. See, and we're slowly coming to this, but I still think we have a way to go. Um, the preachers that grew up when I was growing up um, were really closed about what was going on, but that, that closeness breeded kind of um, a, a kind of breeding ground for sin. So you, you heard of all these preachers falling because I think because they felt they had nowhere to go. And if you look at the, uh, preachers that are out there today, like, uh, Stephen Furtick, Michael Todd, Rich Wilkerson, all of those preachers, you would understand that there's a shift in, in not only in culture, but in preaching. When I think of the three pre preachers I mentioned, I think of their openness and their transparency and their willingness to put themselves out there. Even even myself, when I talk about um, um, my 
um, diabetes and my struggles that I've had with uh, relationships and at times feeling lonely and feeling like I'm I'm just um, uh, alone and not good enough, although I know I'm not. But sometimes the devil will make you think that you're not. So I think, um, and the Lord said to me today, she, he said, I want you to talk about the transparency chain. And he said, the church is starting to come out of uh, that closeness that breeds sin, and when your sin finds you out, everybody finds out, and then when everybody finds out, it's out there. Um, whatever it is, is out there. And he, But he's like, before it gets to that point, I need them to understand the transparency chain. So, um, today, the sermon is called the transparency chain so the lord spoke to me last night and he said it it starts with openness openness breeds transparency transparency breeds understanding and understanding breeds healing so let me explain the difference between openness and transparency. Openness is basically being open about what's going on, being forthcoming, forthright, uh, telling what people need to know about what's going on or if it can help people. That's what's being open ab about, like, that's what being open is about. Uh, transparency is not only being open, but being, it's, it's kind of like being translucent, letting people not only see the situation, but to see the pain of the situation, the happiness of the situation, the anger of the situation. Some of us are open without being transparent. And sometimes you need to be open, but you don't need to be transparent. But sometimes you need to be open and transparent, depending on the situation. Sometimes you need to be open and not be transparent. And some pe sometimes you need to be open and transparent. Um, uh, I was wa watching a celebrity, um, a good example of this, that si um, the, the celebrity, not celebrity, but this singer and his wife, after years of trying, just had a baby. And they were talking about uh, how they wanted to keep it a secret um, because of scrutiny and that is something that they wanted to keep to themselves because it's important to keep a, a part of yourself while being open and transparent. Um, to yourself and I think sometimes when we think of uh, transparency sometimes some, some of us don't know how to be um, transparent or what the right time is to be transparent and I think that takes the Holy Spirit and when I say being open and transparent I'm not saying being open and transparent to everyone. I'm not saying to put your business out on Facebook and YouTube so that everyone knows. At times, that is necessary. 
But most times, you have to be open with someone, but not transparent with uh, everyone. Because um, sometimes I fear that even the open, openness and transparency is necessary, like I said. Um, there are times when I think it is too much that we just seem to splash our business all over Instagram, Facebook, and uh, WhatsApp. We seem to just want to overshare, I think they call it, thinking that like it gets it out. But usually, it just drives people nuts. Although you must be open and transparent, um, you have to pick the time and pick the place. I, I think what's going on is we, we're open with everybody so that we don't have to be transparent with people who really know us and can help us heal. Um, because I said, openness breeds transparency. Transparency breeds understanding, and understanding breeds healing. But if we just stay at the openness stage with everybody, we don't have to really heal. We've told you our issue, but we haven't been transparent with you. We haven't let you see the intricacies of the pain and the joy and whatever is going on. We're open with everyone so that we don't have to be open, have to be transparent with the people that really matter because we're afraid the people that really matter in our lives will judge us. We, we love to share our lives and sharing our lives is awesome but um but uh sometimes we overshare and oversharing can be a detriment too because if you put yourself out there um just all your business out there then um you are more open to scrutiny and scrutiny is a very tough thing to deal with. And I think um, a lot of times people have um, a life that is open but not transparent. They're open with everybody but not transparent with the people that really matter. So it's important to be open and transparent. But you have to be uh, transparent and open with the people that really matter. And sometimes it's possible, it's possible to be open with everybody, to be open on Facebook, but only transparent with some somebody. So, um, I... I for, for example, I got diagnosed with diabetes at 35, but I told, I was open about it, but I, I told everybody even on YouTube about it, on Facebook, I put a video out saying, hey, I was diagnosed with diabetes and all that. But I was not transparent. I was open telling you I had diabetes, but I was not uh, transparent, meaning I didn't say oh, what my numbers were, or what I was eating, or what, what, what was inter the, the intricacies that were going on about my diagnosis. And periodically upset how I'm doing, but I haven't uh, put it all out there for people to see. 
because quite honestly um pe people don't need to know all of my uh business and what i'm working on some of the stuff is just for me and god some of the stuff that is going on in my life needs healing needs 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 working on needs forgiveness uh, sometimes I have issues, and although it's important to be uh, open and transparent, um, it, it's not necessary for people to always know everything that's going on in my life. Uh, so everybody should have somebody to be transparent about whatever issue is going on in your life you know whether it's a financial issue whether it's a, um, a marital issue if you're married whether it be an issue if you're single um, everybody needs someone in their life uh, to be transparent about with about and sometimes, sometimes the person who you're transparent with is not the same person. So you could be transparent about someone with your money that that you will, uh, and you could be transparent about with another person about your your health. Um, I think that. It's time to be open and transparent. I think the Lord is actually shifting the body of Christ that way. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years he is going to bring about new tools to, uh, to facilitate that more. Like, I see the typical sermon uh, changing... Uh, to, at least in some churches, to a more discussionary format than I'm talking at you. I see the sermon changing uh, to I'm, I'm talking to you. and Because I think that uh, people need to be talked to sometimes and not at. And I think this whole shift is coming. I see it coming. I don't know when, I don't know from who, but I think the Lord is uh, really going to shift how sermons, is go how sermons are going to be done. Because the Lord wants real healing to happen. Real um, physical healing, real, emo real emotional healing, real spiritual healing. And I think, although I love the traditional sermon style, I think it really does not bring the healing that he that he wants to see. I I see him shifting the whole thing uh, in years to come, where pastors are actually more talking to you. Uh, rather than preaching at you, and and I see a lot more um, interaction. I see us in the church breaking the fourth wall. When I say breaking the fourth wall, I mean um, just taking in television. There are three walls there are, when you look at a, 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 a set like friends when they design a set like friends um, the TV show when they design a room they they put up three walls and the fourth wall is the camera so the fourth ball, there are three balls in the room, and then there's the camera, where, where 
which means that's where the audience is. And you'll notice if you watch Friends or Mad About You or all of those, you'll notice that they don't speak directly to the camera. Like they always talk, they're always talking to each other away from the fourth wall. And I think that the Lord is breaking down that fourth wall where preaching is concerned, what, where we're not so much saying, uh, this is it, um, this is what the Word says and whatever, but we're talking to you. Like, uh, we're, I see a shift coming where uh, sermons are more interactive, uh, um, like a conversation uh, between the congregation and the pastor, rather than a, a kind of declaration where the pastor just saying, uh, this is this and that is that. Because I will tell you from being a, a minister or preacher for 11 years, I can tell you that there are some of you out there that know more than me about a lot of things that we could share together. And I think um, when I was growing up, I think uh, preachers were put on a pedestal that they didn't put themselves on. We put them on there as the congregation. And when we saw them fall because of a lack of transparency and a lack of having anyone to talk to that, will, that won't judge you, I think it creates darkness and darkness breeds sin. Light breeds righteousness, and I believe darkness breeds sin. And I think we saw all these preachers fall because they had no one to talk to about what they struggled with. Because when you're a preacher, like, where else do you go when you past your congregation and everyone's coming to you. Uh, where else do you go? And a lot of preachers don't have uh, places to go. Some preachers have mentors and they have people around them. But um, sometimes when you're struggling and you just have people that will say yes to you, it's really, really, really tough. And the scrutiny about with being a preacher and on a preacher's family is really tough. Like, it's like people expect you to have all the answers. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. We don't. I often say to the Lord, I often joke. I, if they really knew who I was, I don't think they'd be listening to me because um, I'm just not who they think they are, who I who they think I am. But I, not that I'm a bad person. I'm a really uh, godly and nice person to be about, around. But if I were to open the door to some of my issues, some of you would say, wow, was she a Christian? Um, and I think that, um, I think that fear, at least for me, is, can be really prevalent. And sometimes as a preacher, the devil will fool, will fool you into thinking that you're the only person going through it. You're the only person who has ever had um, a sexual thought when you're single. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need to just not do this. But, and, and sometimes um, 
condemnation comes. Although you know there is no condemnation in Christ, sometimes there's a distance between what you know and what actually is. And I think that although I love the Word of God, sometimes there's an actual distance between what the Word of God says and what you're really dealing with. And I think sometimes we're afraid to say that we are not there yet. We are not full of faith. We are not, uh, you know, where we should be. And I think that's the detriment of the church because sometimes the church forces us to be there when we are not there and, and spook, um, forces us to say things that uh, we're not ready to uh, say because we think if we say the truth that the lightning bolts will just come and just, just crucify us. But the opposite is true. If you continue to pretend um, that you are where you're, you're not, um, it'll, it'll breed a spirit of lying, and the spirit of lying will, will crucify you. And I'm not saying not to speak faith, but there are times when you just need to say, Lord, this is crap. Or, Lord, I'm going through this not to rehearse it, not to celebrate it, braid, braid it, or not to nurse over it, but to be free from it. Um, oh my gosh, I went way further fr from my original premise, but I'll get back there. Okay, so I said, um, openness breeds transparency. And transparency breeds understanding, and understanding breeds healing. Let me explain that. Um, I talked about the difference between openness and transparency. Openness is when you just share your share your thoughts and share your life with people. Transparency is when you let them see the pain under your life and under the issues that go with that, that's transparency, because it makes me think of translucent when you can see through. Um, it breeds understanding. When you are uh, transparent with the right person, it can breed, it can bring forth understanding um, about a specific situation. Not always, but it can it can um, bring forth understanding. And you always say, people don't understand me, people don't understand me, people don't understand me. Well, have you ever explained it to them? Have you ever tried, at least tried to explain it to them? Because what I've learned in my life is, uh, people are not mind readers. They don't understand things that you don't explain. Um, and even when you can't explain it uh, verbally, sometimes you can write it in a letter. Sometimes you can share it in a group. Sometimes you can record it like I do and let them listen to it, and then after they listen to it, um, you can, you can, uh, go on and, and talk about it more, because sometimes the initial problem, uh, with understanding is just getting the thing out, especially when it's deep and painful and just a traumatic experience. Uh, it's sometimes hard to get out. Sometimes uh, to have words to say, it's hard to get out. And sometimes 
writing it down is easier or um, recording it can be easier just to get it out. And I think that sometimes and that understanding will will most likely breed some sort of healing. It will at least be the start of healing. It may not be complete healing, but it will at least be the start of healing. So um, you can be, you don't need to be openness breeds transparency. Transparency breeds understanding and understanding breeds healing uh, or the start of healing. Um, because when somebody understands you, they can, they can more empathize with you and know how to walk with you and know how to help you. You've been wearing the mask of, I'm fine, I'm okay, for too long. And you are not fine. You are not okay. And you don't need to be um, transparent or even open with everybody. But you need to be at least open with somebody. And you need to be transparent with somebody. And the person that you're open with is not necessarily the, the person you need to be open and transparent with. So you can tell, back to my musician example, you can tell um, somebody that you are, you, you and your husband, you and your wife, are trying to have a baby and be open about that. But but then you can tell another person, um, yeah, we're trying to have a baby and it's taking a long time. This is this and that is that. And, and be transparent with another person. Um, and be transparent and talk about the inter intricacies of that and you can go into detail with that person and it doesn't have to be the same person sometimes this is why uh this is why counseling is good because sometimes it helps to be open with people that have no connection to your life but have an understanding of the human brain and how people behave um, I've been in counseling in the past periodically, and what I find it does more than anything is get stuff off my chest, and I can get t tools, I can get understanding, I, I can, and I can get healing from that. Just, just, um because I know somebody understands me and it's awesome. I think we've uh, falsified the church for too long. And when I say falsified, we put up walls and think, and think that all God wants is our worship and our praise. Yes, he does want that. Yes, he deserves that. And I think that when we come together, on Sunday morning, we need to give him that. Um, but I really think the Lord also, I sense that he's saying, I want true healing. I want deliverance for my people. I want wholeness for my people. I want just them living, living big lives for me. And I'm not saying big as in celebrity big. I'm saying big as in, as in a light for Christ. But what's holding us back from that is, I think, the ability to be um, 
to be truthful with ourselves and to be truthful of what's going on. And we often say to shake off, to shake up what's going on and just praise the Lord. But I don't think the Lord wants us to just shake it up. I think he wants us to actually start shaking it off, uh, deal with it, bring it to him, whatever issues that we have, and then we can get healed from it. Um, Because I heard Kirk Franklin say something one time. He said, the Lord won't heal what you won't reveal. And I think the lack of healing in people's lives is not because God doesn't heal. It's because we won't reveal. The lack of healing in our lives is not because God won't heal. It's because we won't reveal. And I think when we reveal our true selves and when we become open and then become transparent and then it reads understanding and then understanding means healing, I believe that's where a true God life begins. Like the God, the God life that he wants you to have. Because there's a life out there, I believe, that God is just waiting for you to have and for that life to happen. Uh, you need to be healed. And I think the Lord is uh, slowly shifting um, the the church to a performance space, um, from a performance space that we have to make things look like wow to just a healing base and a conversation kind of, uh, kind of, where we can admit that we're we're all struggling, we're all in it together, and we can be free. And the Lord wants holiness and wholeness, and it is possible. But you just have to be willing to first be open, and then be transparent, and then it can read understanding, and understanding can read healing. So I think I to- totally believe that the Lord wants you to be healed. I believe it can happen. I believe that it will happen. And I believe healing doesn't always start, always um, starts with the Lord. The Lord is there in healing, but sometimes in healing, He wants you to take that step. He wants you to take that step and say, Lord, I need help. And then when you confess your sins to him, um, he'll lead you to the right resources. But I I totally think that our problem with healing is is not with the Lord. It's with our inability to connect to each other, to confess our sins to each other. I believe that in a society that is so um, out there and everything's open and everything's like, we have billions of friends and followers, but we don't have a lot of uh, confidants or people that know us, people that know us inside out, and people that we feel comfortable with. We've had we've had people in our lives for 20, 30, 40 years, and they don't know who we are. We put up this facade, and the Lord is calling today. I really believe He's calling today for the f- facade to come down, for that glass screen to be broken and for people to for at least one person to see who you really are not everybody needs to see who you really are and sometimes you could be open on facebook 
but you don't have to be transparent on Facebook. Uh, be open as in you can tell the issue, but you don't have to go through go into the intricacies of the issue. Um, like my diet, um, when I got diagnosed with diabetes, I was telling you I was open with everybody, but I wasn't transparent with everybody. I was transparent with a few people that I knew could help me. Sometimes we like to be transparent with people who can't help us, and but we need to be um, all too careful to be transparent with the the people that want good for us, and sometimes we don't know um, uh, the people who want good for us versus the people that are riding our coattails and. What I would say to that is ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit who in your life you can be open with and who in your life you can be open and transparent so that it breeds understanding and understanding breeds healing. Um... The reason why understanding breeds healing is that when people understand what you're going through, they they sometimes can bring resources to help you, bring knowledge to help you, bring wisdom to help you, and that that could be the start of your healing. Sometimes healing is not just God working a miracle and and that's it. Sometimes. Most times, I find, healing requires your participation, and he so desperately wants to heal you, to see you freed. He wants you to come out of the dark to his marvelous light, and salvation is not a one-time thing. Uh, I, I'm finding salvation is just uh, a everyday thing. Like, I have to uh, ask the Lord every day to come into this situation and help me with it. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes that's hard to do because we're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of ridicule. We're afraid of what if they know. But what if they know? Isn't it better that, that somebody knows? Not everybody has to know, but somebody who can help you and that loves you knows what's really going on under there. So it can breed healing. And, and most times, healing requ requires others. Um, there are times where the Lord could heal you and no one knows about it. I've had, I've had issues in my life where that happens. But most times, He will bring the right people into your healing. And that's why you need to be open and transparent. Um, because so He can bring through your words the right people into your circumstance. I went through an issue years ago that I was afraid to tell tell anybody that I was in this issue. But um, sometimes when you're hiding an issue in the dark, it finds you out. And... Um, Outside agencies started calling me, and I couldn't deal with this issue alone. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, and the outside agency just kept calling me. I got to a point where I just didn't want to answer the phone, and then I was like, I have to deal with this issue. So what happened? 
is I called, I didn't go on Facebook and say, I'm going through this issue, and blah, blah, blah. I talked to a trusted family member, because they were going through this issue. And then, that family member led me to uh, resources that could help me with this issue. And then now I'm free of that issue. That issue is not an issue for me anymore. Because I was able to be transparent and open with someone. You don't need to be open with everyone. But uh, there are cases where you can be open with everyone and transparent with someone. But there are cases where you don't have to be open with anyone, with everyone, sorry. You don't have to be open with everyone, but you need to be open with someone. And there are cases where you can be open with everyone, but just transparent um, with some, with um, a few people. You can tell, you can say on Facebook that you're going through this and please pray, but you need to be transparent with someone. If that makes sense. I don't even know if I'm explaining right. I hope so. Um, so, Father, th thank you for teaching us about the transparency chain today. We bless you. We love you. We adore you. You are just God and you give wisdom and understanding where there needs to be wisdom and understanding, Lord God. I pray that you'll break every chain today, that you'll cause mass to come down, that you'll cause people to be transparent with their loved ones and find someone in their lives that they can be transparent about. Lord God, I praise you and worship you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. I pray that the Lord will reveal to you today for the issues in your life, who to be open with, who to be transparent with, whether that openness thing will will um, help someone. Um, so you can put it publicly on social media or whether it's to be kept with you and just to be transparent with you. I pray that the Lord will reveal to you for your life who to be open and transparent with or who to be just open with or what to deal, what to do about this situation. You've been struggling with it for too long and the Lord wants you to experience his freedom, true freedom, and the God life. The God life, the so, so, Shalom life, nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken, is possible, is possible. It is possible to be free from addiction. It is possible to be free from self-loathing and self-hatred. It is possible to be free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word today. Thank you for this uh, revealing to us about the transparency change. I declare life change on in every heart, every spirit, every soul that it's going to be hearing this today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Trans transform and repair our minds to receive and prepare our minds to receive what you have planned for us, Father. Thank you for talking to us about the transparency chain. We love you and we bless you.
In the name of Jesus, amen.